Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, the Land Geek, for their favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And on today's roundtable podcast, we are so happy to have Jeannie Morum back. Jeannie, how are you? Hi, doing great. Thanks for having me on again. Yeah, you had a, you had a nasty flu going there for a while. I did. I went to go visit my county, and I got a cold, along with the... Uh, with uh, stomach issues, but I'm all on the upswing, so I'm all good. All right, great. Well, we're, we're glad to have you back. Thank we you. got the big papa in the house. What's up, Pete? Hey, everyone. Happy to be on. How's, uh, how's everything going with you? You know, life is good. Uh, I really don't have much to complain about. I'm feeling, feeling pretty blessed. Awesome. The Bearland, Bearland Aaron, how are you? I'm doing pretty good. All right, good, good. And of course, the always irascible Eric Peterson. Eric. Hello. Oh, hello, Eric. Happy to be here. So glad to have you. Uh, the Zen master, breathe in the mailing, breathe out the marketing, Mike Zeno. <laughs> I always learn a new word on this, irascible. Is that what you call them? <laughs> irascible. Look, Yeah. I gotta look that up now. It's a thesaurus word. I'm not afraid to, <laughs> to throw it out. No, I love it. Oh, I'm doing great, and I love the book every time. I always get a new word. I love it. Word of the day. Word of the day. And of course, last but not least, Six Sigma. You know him. You love him. Scott Todd. ScottTodd.net. Landmodo.com. Most importantly, if you're not automating your Craigslist and your Facebook postings, postingdomination.com forward slash the land geek. Scott Todd, how are you? Mark, I'm great. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Today's podcast is sponsored by the Dirt Rich book. Go ahead to the landgeek.com forward slash dirt rich. Download the first chapter. Um, next week, we are planning on launching. I think it's next week. Um, and uh, very excited about that. If you had or if you'd asked uh, support for a uh, to for on pre-sales uh, we will be emailing you next week and you'll get the book first at a very discounted price which I'm not really ready to tell you yet but it will be irresistible um so Jeannie, let's start with you for the round table you, you brought up a really interesting uh subject can you would you mind explaining sure um i'm on linkedin and I have individuals that reach out to me that are investors. So for example, I had a develop manager reach out to me and uh, let me know that he has an inventory of off market deals in our area. So my question is for all you gentlemen that are experts in this area, do you ever reach out to these individuals and buy property from them? Um, and if you do, uh, is it profitable? Tate Litchfield. Um, I've been approached by several people. I'll look over any deal. Um, ultimately, it's going to come down to the margins there. I'm not opposed to buying from somebody as long as there's uh, still some meat on the bone. Uh, and no, I haven't necessarily bought directly from one. But as everybody knows, I'm a big, I'm a big fan on wholesale. So, Bearland Aaron, how about you? Uh, isn't that cheating? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um i haven't but you know like tate i will i'll look at anything anybody's got i mean it's kind of like when you get a guy or lady that uh you know maybe was a big tax sale buyer you know something like that and they have a large inventory um maybe they were you know they were doing it as investments that sort of thing but now they're willing to sell so you know, we can look at what they've got. Um, it's kind of the same deal. It's just a, a different form of contact. Um, I'd look at what they have and see what, you know, you just definitely have to know your market and know your area pretty well. So you can really um, enter the negotiation on a side of knowledge. But yeah, I, I would I would look into it. Sure. All right. All right. Eric Peterson. Well, I think the first couple of answers were great so far. I mean, the only thing I might add to it is if, um, if that property is already outside of counties you work in, um, 
you know, it's obviously going to take an investment of your time to kind of dig into those areas and kind of assess the market and decide if that's an area that, that you can buy and sell in and then, you know, determine your pricing. Um, so if you're willing to go through all that on, you know, any given deal, um, you know, there's no reason not to look at it. Um, you know, it just may require some, some due diligence on your end first, if it's outside of your area. So. Yeah. I, I love that answer, Eric. Let's, let's just call that the newbie rabbit hole. Right. Like, it's, it's a really great way to take you off on a, you know, just a crazy adventure that may not, you know, yield any results. Um, Zen Master Mike, what are your thoughts? Oh, you're on mute. Oh, all right. There you Can go. you hear me now? All right. I, I, I bought from and sold to other investors. And in terms of the margins, Gene, I, I always tell people when you're dealing in wholesale or buying from anyone, you have to treat it just like an accepted offer. The, the process for the due diligence, uh, it's, it's the same. Exactly. You, you'll, you know, you obviously never take a word of somebody else, say this is what it's worth. And, you know, people are always going to give you, um, and I'm not saying this person is doing it that way on purpose, but part of marketing is like, hey, these are off-market deals for you, right? Make it kind of irresistible they're doing, right? But you have to treat it like an accepted offer. You have to still go through uh, just, and when people buy from me, I tell them, hey, tr you know, treat my wholesale deal as an accepted offer. Do your due diligence? Of course I do mine, but, you know, that's something to be aware of, I think, when you're dealing in that environment. Yeah, yeah. Scott, Todd, how about you? Yeah, I mean, I'll look at, I'll look at most things, but it's really got to be in the county that I'm working in because like, like Eric said, man, when you start to go and you know, like, Hey, I got a deal over here. I got a deal over here. Well, the next thing you know, like you're spending all your time, like relearning the, you know, the, the system and the process and the area and the market. And it just becomes kind of like a time suck and a rabbit hole. You really want to go down that path just for one deal. Now, if they're going to bring me like a bunch of them, and it's an area that I might be interested in, great, then let's look at it. But otherwise, I think I'm just going to have to pass. Yeah, I mean, Jeannie, I can't tell you how many times I've looked at a portfolio of deals, right? These are what I call spreadsheet deals. So a billion-dollar private equity group um, or hedge fund goes out to the auction, right? And they're buying up the tax liens, on houses, right? Inevitably, when they're buying in bulk like that, they're going to buy some raw land that they don't want in their inventory. And it's just, a, it's just a spreadsheet to them. And so they send you the spreadsheet and it could be, you know, three deals worth, let's say, you know, $10 million, right? I mean, this is real money. This is big money. It's a ton of due diligence. And then you start digging into it and you're like, there's no meat in the bone. Um, it's, you know, it's, it's more a deal where it's, they're just not discounting it enough or um, the risk reward ratio isn't there or whatever reason there is, there can be environmental issues, you know, all these things. And when you're talking about, you know, these huge portfolios, um, it's, it's not really our niche, right? Not to say that if you had a hundred million dollar land fund, you wouldn't go after these deals and be happy making 30%, right? But, you know, for the people listening to the Roundtable podcast, you know, we want to really focus on our bread and butter deals um, and not these, you know, sort of uh, unemotional sellers with portfolios or spreadsheet deals that, you know, it's like finding a needle in the haystack where you might find it 20 cents on the dollar. They're sophisticated. They're not giving away this land typically. Um, Scott, how would you say that's been your experience? Yeah. I mean, like typically, you know, if, if you're going to go after the, um, the tax lien investor that, that's got land, well, he's going to hold out for top dollar. He, he's not, he's not motivated to sell. He doesn't need to sell. Uh, you know, a lot of these tax lien investors, they got big money and you know, they just don't have that desire to sell for 20, 30 cents on the dollar they might sell for 80 cents on the dollar, but then you're not making the same margin. So it's a completely different business model. Yeah. I mean, I'd rather go, let's say that, you know, I've got Luna County in New Mexico, right. And I'm getting deal after deal after deal there. 
right? I'd rather go after nonprofits in Luna County where I know I can, I can sell this property all day long and, and do that, right? As opposed to, um, you know, going after a big tax lien fund and sifting through, you know, literally hundreds of properties that may or may not have any, you know, meat on the bone. So that's, that's something to consider there. You know, this is really um, valuable information because of all the experience that you gentlemen have, you're still not going after these big um, tax lien funds. You're doing what everybody else is doing, right? Yeah, no, absolutely. Absolutely. So, you, you know, know, I think, are, yeah, go ahead, Scott. I was gonna say, I, Jeannie, you make your, you really make your money. You, you've heard this before. You make your money on the buy, you make your money on the buy, you make your money. And really what said another way is you make your money by finding the deal, right? Like that's really the money where you make the money. It's not from going to a realtor and saying, Hey, bring me a deal. I mean, there's no, there's no money there because you, you haven't found it. It's like, it's like, it's like Bearland Aaron. He goes out and when he, when he finds his own food out there on the plane and you know, he gets, he gets like a big cow or a bear, whatever the Bearland family eats, I don't know, but whatever they're eating out there, the big, big animals. Well, it's free. Like it's free for him to like go find and hunt that food, that meat. Me, I gotta go to the grocery store because I'm civilized, and uh, <laughs> and, I, and I'm gonna pay like top dollar. So you know that's kind of like the best example I can give, right? And Mark, really fast, please mute Bearland's phone phone right now so he doesn't like attack me. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Bearland, do you have any uh, rebuttal? Here? rebuttal? <laughs> what, sure what we call that? Irascible what, Eric Peterson will come to your rescue. Yeah. <laughs> I, I see Scott's armed with the mini bat waiting for the response, but uh, Zeno will appreciate that. I think we call those uh, kills out on the plane the uh, $1 Skittle. Yeah, the $1 Skittle. $1 Skittle. So, you know, go to the grocery store, Scott. I'll take my $1 Skittles and cook them uh, up on the grill. There, there Mike, you go, G. My, yeah. Yeah, Mike Zeno, if you're listening to this podcast – and you don't know what the $1 Skittle is, how can you start learning these new terms? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you got to come on the nightcap. Uh, this week it's going to be Thursday. Oh, actually, it's going to be next week, right? So next we week. have it Wednesday or Thursday night, depending on the uh, schedule. And, you know, we, we like to give things uh, a little bit of, uh, you know, significance so people can remember them. So the $1 Skittle is one of them. Uh, I think we can all relate to that. Scott Todd's got a bone to pick with you. Uh, yes, about I what? Do. Yes, I do. Yeah. Is it because you didn't swim? Scott's got the bear going today. Is it because you didn't swim? No, no, no. That's not important to me, Mike. You oh. and Scott Bossman, I have a problem with. I don't know, <laughs> do, we, do we want to air that here, Mark, or what? Yeah, let's go ahead. Let's let's air it out. I mean, let's, <laughs> oh, let's just boy. The round table. <laughs> so you know, here, Mike. Here's what's happening, man. Like your your TV show, your your <laughs> Facebook Live, your your hour. The power hour, whatever you want to call it, nightcap spelt wrong, whatever you want to call it, <laughs> has impacted me. And let me explain what happened. You see, like, here I am. I'm leaving flight school last Thursday. And, like, remember, flight school is Eastern time, 9 p.m. Eastern time. And I went through the material, and around, like, I don't know, about 9.50, 9.55, I felt like the engagement level just kind of dropped. I'm like, where'd all my people go? Where's the energy? What happened? What, what, what's going on? You guys have any questions? And everybody's like, no, no questions, nothing, 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 nothing. And then it connected. Like they wanted to get off of flight school so they could go and like play in the playground with the nightcap guys. Oh. Back, man, like I felt like, I felt like you guys obstructed learning. So that's my bone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, this is funny because this happens to me. I'm talking to my kids about something important, and all of a sudden, you know, a text message will jump up. And then Tate will appreciate that. Dad, Jay Cole's coming to town. It's like, wait a second. <laughs> yeah. We're, we're talking about something <laughs> meaningful. <laughs> so, well, I can't necessarily, like, prove it. I do know, Mike, that they jumped off of flight school 
and raced over to your TV show. And I in think fact, one of my students was a guest. I'm like, what? <laughs> no. Well, no. Would, it help, would, would it help if we let you swivel? <laughs> no. We, we cannot stop forward progress by getting off of flight school so we can go play. <laughs> the no more of that. And I will be talking to them on Thursday, too. Yeah, Mike, and I think that really segues into our next topic, which is shiny object syndrome with counties, right? <laughs> so we've got the quick-tempered Eric Peterson. You don't ever want to go into one of Eric's counties, right? It's ugly. I've, 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 I've seen him take me to the side of boot camp and, like, point the finger at me. So but let's just take Eric's county. Let's just take Luna County. As an example, he's crushing it in Luna. I go in there, and all of a sudden, you know, we got a problem, right? So the shiny object, go ahead, Tate. Oh, no, no, no. I was just scratching. Go ahead. Keep going. Yeah, so, so I'm in, you know, my county in New Mexico, but then I see Eric is crushing it in Luna, and all of a sudden I want to switch over into Luna, right? And then I got to deal with Eric and the finger. So how often does this – uh, affect you Jeannie how often does do you look at what other land sellers are doing and you want to hop off your county into another county it's really tempting I look you I look, look. Mm -hmm. and then what do you do uh, well I tested out I don't want to get in trouble with you guys that's all I gotta say so I, I kind of stay in my own little territory and uh I like you guys, and I don't, I don't, I don't want to make any waves. So, I and then there's plenty of land out there, plenty. All right, all right, Tate. How do you how do you uh, stay focused and not go on shiny object syndrome and just jump on any county that Eric is working? Yeah, I mean, it's really hard not to want to copy what Eric's doing, but ultimately, Eric's running his business, and I'm running mine, and. <laughs> I need to focus on the areas where my buyers have expressed interest. So moving to a new area where I don't have anyone lined up for the properties that I might be able to buy doesn't make a lot of sense for me. So I think it just comes down to that little bit of focus and uh, commitment to where you're at. And, and if you're in a good area and you're having good sales and leads and, and you're doing everything right, there's not a whole lot of reason to be bouncing around all the time. So I'm just focused on where I'm making money. And if Eric's making money somewhere else, I'm happy for him. But uh, until my deals sl slow down or run out, I'm going to keep doing business there until there's nothing left. Yeah. Yeah. Barrett, Lynn, Aaron, what are your thoughts? Well, I, I definitely agree with Tate. Um, but I, I think what's happening is that people are using the correct concept at the wrong time. You know, they're, they're seeing what other people are doing. You're seeing buying and selling, and then you get that shiny object, object syndrome, which is probably the right thing to, to look at when you're ready to consider another county. Like maybe you're, the county you're in is gone. You know, the sales have gone away. Um, you've done everything you can. Um, you know, seasonal changes, that sort of thing. But, um, you know, if you're actually ready for another county, then you should be looking at what all the other land buyers are doing and seeing where things are hot and selling and that sort of thing. Um, but you just have to be careful that you're not doing that while you're actively working good counties. You know, um, I've heard Scott say over and over that, you know, pe people make a whole living in one area of one county and that's it. You know, so if you've got sales that are happening, you know, see about ramping them up rather than just jumping ship to another one where, because all you'll ever do is be behind the ball. You'll be following everybody else. And by the time you catch up, you know, that probably won't be as hot as it was, you know? Um, so I think, you know, the concept is right. It's just, you know, while, while you have a decent County, it's not the right time for that. Sure, sure. Eric Peterson. I agree completely. I think um, it's, it's really easy um, if you're out there watching what others are doing and you see 
you know, someone started advertising a property and they turn around and sell it right away. And you're like, wow, you know, I, I don't have that same result. You know, I'm going to go over there and, and try to do what that person is doing. But the reality is like, you don't have that buyer's list that, you know, that other seller might have, um, you know, maybe they've been working in that area a while. They've built that all up and, you know, they've got a whole kind of marketing machine and buyer's list built, built around that. That's really helping facilitate those sales and move them forward. So if you jump in there, um, you know, it's not to say you can't get sales, but, um, it's certainly going to take a, a good long time to, to build that up, to, you know, get the same kind of result. And then, you know, just like Aaron said, you know, is the timing going to be off by then, you know? Yeah, I know. It's, it's such a good answer. And I was, I was just editing my, my second book and I've got a, a story about my jealous rage about Scott Todd. So it's Valentine's day. And I actually am writing about the story about Scott's going and he's taking his wife to lunch in an airplane. They're flying to lunch. Right? I'm flying her. I'm flying her. Mark. You're, you're flying her. And I'm, I'm like, captain there though. Right. So like, so all of a sudden, like this, this warm wash of inadequacy just, just, you know, goes over me and like, this is just never going to happen for me. But the, the truth is like, he went through it. He trained, he put the time in and now he can fly a plane and I can just look at that and say, well, why can't that be me? But he's already put in the work. And I think that's what Eric is, is sort of alluding to is like, you just don't know the work involved why they're able to sell quickly in that county. It could just be, you know, it, it may be more complex an answer than it's just a hot county, right? Um, Mike Zeno, what about you? Yeah, um, I don't think it's so much about the hot county. I think you hit it on the head what everybody did collectively. It's, if you look at someone making sale after sale, they've cultured, you know, they've cultivated that, that area with their buyers list and, and engaging people in that area to so the point where they can now quickly sell properties one after another. So, I mean, in the beginning, I don't want to misrepresent the fact that in the beginning, it's important to look where everybody else is to choose an initial area. But when you get that initial area, that's when you're going to dig your feet and dig your heels in and go through and build your, build your buyers list and, and take that uh, time to cultivate the area. I mean, we went into a new area a few months back, not because of shiny object syndrome. We just wanted to try a new area. And it took, honestly, about two or three months. And now the sales are coming very regularly, but it took time to cultivate that area, build up a new buyer's list. And, uh, you know, I, so I don't think it's necessarily, I mean, yeah, some areas of the country might be hotter certain times of the year, not in terms of temperature, but sales. Uh, but I also, I really think it's a matter of the person working that area taking the time and effort, digging their heels in and building up their buyers list. And I think that's, so if you jump from here to there to there, it's going to be very difficult for you. Yeah, absolutely. Scott Todd, you want the last word on this? Yeah. I mean, I would, I would just say that um, I remember like I went to an area and I thought, man, this is going to be a great area. And I, um, I went, I went out, I, uh, bought the property. I started marking the property. I had some initial success in the area. Like I sold like one or two properties and it seemed like it was very quickly. And then all of a sudden, like all my ads, like nothing happened, like nothing. Like I'm like, Oh, this is a terrible area. And I was really kind of on it. And what was happening with Mark was I was advertising these properties in August, which we have said in the past, August is a slower month, right? And in fact, it was a very slow month. I sold zero in this one area and it freaked me out. I was ready to pack up and leave only to discover that the hot season for this area is like September to, to, to uh, December, <laughs> right? So, right. you know, like had I picked up and left and like I would have missed out on something. So now every September to December, I show back up to this area and I'm like, hey, you got some land here. Uh, the rest of the year, not so much. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, but it, it, it's so true. Like, you never know what someone else is doing. They may have a huge buyer's list. They may be, you know, using posting domination and they're able to like just dominate on Craigslist in that market. Um, you know, who knows? So it's one of those things you just can't look at you know, someone's website or go on Landmodo, like, oh, it looks like everybody's here. This must be the county. So you want to really 
you don't want to abandon the, the principle that Scott Todd teaches in flight school, which is you want to go where other people are doing deals. That being said, you want to have patience with your county as well and not, you know, be a little, uh, you know, a frogger hopping, hopping, hopping county to county to county um, and not, you know, give it enough time. Scott, would that be the, yeah, the best way to say it? You got it. All right. So speaking of flight school, um, we've got a new program called Top Gun. And uh, once you graduate from flight school uh, and you're a coaching client, also it's included, but Top Gun is really taking uh, a module from each coach every single month and going very deep with it. And uh, this last module, Scott Todd crushed it. Scott, what did you teach? Uh, basically, the topic was uh, how to crowdsource your ad writing. So what we did was we went through, I had been tweaking the system of, that I've been using to, um, to write some ads. And I basically went through, in a very short time, this little change, literally this uh, program, I kind of walked them through like how I've got like up to half a million people looking with the ability to write my ads for me. And so I, I kind of showed how I was doing it and what I put into place. I mean, Mark, the feedback from everybody was fantastic. Uh, you know, I, I know. I'm so sick of people, you know, referring to you as a genius. Uh, yeah, I am too, actually. No. Yeah. <laughs> it feeds my ego. And you know what it does? Is it, I take those and I give it to my wife and I'm like, another person thinks I'm a genius. You know? yeah. so, so keep the feedback coming. It's, it helps me at home too. Uh, and bloats my ego. But that said, you know, I think that what's cool about it is that, like you said, it gave us the ability, uh, this Top Gun has given us the ability to kind of take some specialized knowledge that we might have. Like this was something I had done, I put into place and, and we gave it to the coaching students. And, you know, this month uh, they got that. And then next week, actually, well, tomorrow when this comes out, Right. Uh, essentially what will happen is they're back on the call for Q and a and execution. So it's, here's the concept now go execute, come back in two weeks and let's, let's see if it worked for you or not. And then we move on, you know, like it's my, my month was done. And then we move on to another coach to teach their something that they're doing, something that you can take action on right now and change your business and grow it, scale it. Yeah. I mean, Top Gun really is for three people. The first group of people that would be interested in it are people that just graduated from flight school and may not be ready for one-on-one -on -one coaching. Um, the second group are obviously the people in coaching. They get Top Gun. And then the third people, the third group are the people that actually graduated from coaching and just want that community, that continued education, that accountability, and that deeper sort of knowledge that they're just not going to be getting anymore. Um, because they're out of coaching. So Mike Zano, how can people learn more about Top Gun? Reach out to Scott Bossman and myself and we'll be more than happy to talk to him about it. That's, uh, I think, you know, it's an exciting program. I think the fact that you get to learn from all different coaches is incredible. I, I, I would like to say that several times in the nightcap, I've called Scott Todd a genius and I call him Alex Trebek. So I don't know why he hates it so much. I mean, I'm, I'm just- No, no, I don't hate it. No, 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 no I don't it's, hate it. He, he, he hates it. Oh, Mark that's. <laughs> I, I think I think it's starting to grade on Tate as well. Keep it coming. Keep it coming. If, if it weren't for the Vegas Knights, like Tate would be like enraged. Yeah. That's <laughs> but Tate was that. I don't know if it, Tate was incredible on the uh, on the nightcap the other night. I mean, I don't know. Even, I, even Wes Schaefer was giving him uh, dap. Yeah, right there on the uh, live comments. I mean, Tate, you want to talk about your? Oh, we. This is wait a minute. I can't go off topic here. I'm sorry, Mark. We talk about order. We're talking about Top Gun. And here I am going off topic. <laughs> That's all right. So if you want to talk to Mike or Scott Bossman, just go to thelandgeek.com forward slash training, schedule a call. And, um, you know, if you've, if you've just got the toolkit, you're not ready for Top Gun, um, you want to talk about flight school. If you just graduated from flight school, schedule a call. If you just graduated from coaching, schedule a call. Um, and if you're in coaching, participate. Enjoy it. Um, and do that. So I thought this was a great round table, uh, Jeannie Morum. How was it for you? You know what? I, I always enjoy these round tables. I think it's, it's, it's a lot of fun for me to sit around and talk with you guys. 
because you guys are approachable. And when I first started and I was in boot camp, I kind of looked at you guys at a, in a distance going, oh, these guys are amazing. And uh, so it's really a privilege to be on here. No, yeah. it's great. It's great. And, you know, and you, you can even see like as intimidating as Eric Peterson is at boot camp, like he's really easy to deal with on the, on the, on the, uh, the mastermind call, right, Eric? Yep, I sure am. <laughs> yeah, for, the, for those of you that love to paint me as this this big mean guy, so he's the he's awesome. the nicest guy you're ever <laughs> going to meet, and it makes me that uncomfortable that I have to keep, you know, ripping on him. So that that just tells you how nice he is, um, especially if you're going to come to boot camp. Uh, I, I think we're good. Is there any any other issues or topics? Bearland, Aaron, anything on your mind? Wait, you're on mute, Bearland. Yeah. I'll take away from Scott again. I think like, you know, like the flight school thing, I think he's just got to, but he did reel himself back. So I, I think he's learning. Yeah, we only got half of that because you're in a rural area, Bearland. Uh, what, oh, what well, never I, mind. What did I do? I reeled myself <laughs> back. No, I was saying Zeno was trying to like pull the subject away from Scott right there at the end of the end of our, our discussion and, and but he caught himself and he pulled himself back. I think he's learning, Scott. Yeah, see, Mark, this is I'll go to the grocery <laughs> store and have good internet connection so that I don't get the dollar skittle and no one can understand what the heck I'm even saying. So Exactly. Exactly. Well I wanna I wanna thank all the listeners. Um Thank you so much for your support and um, you know, please support us even further. It really means a lot. If you just do three little things, it's really easy to do. Subscribe, rate, and review the podcast. Send us a screenshot of that review to support at the We're going to send you for free the passive income launch kit, which is normally $97. And pretty soon I can't wait to offer up the rich book as well. So um, I still got to talk to Danielle about that before we do that. But pretty soon, that, that could be something we can do, um, which I'm excited about. Anyways, I want to thank everybody. And uh, are we doing this, Todd? Uh, yeah, we're doing it, Mark. Right? We're doing it. All right. One, two, three. Let, Let freedom, freedom ring. ring. Oh, Look at that. Bearland didn't do it with his crappy internet connection and it worked. Worked. <laughs> so did, I, did I hear Laura in the background saying that was messy? Yes. Yeah, sorry. Jeez. Laura, Laura, that was like the tabernacle choir for us. That was without, without Bearland. That was amazing. That, that was about as in sync as we're ever going to get. I think the problem was going to the whole time, Mark. Yeah, it's it's all about it's all about that uh, that bandwidth. I wish we could do it to Eric's guitar. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> Eric, we need to play the guitar on the podcast. It's not gonna happen. Right after Mike plays his keyboard. <laughs> all right, all right. Look, we we gotta go around a little. Who who's got the hidden talent? All right, Jeannie, what's your hidden talent? I I don't. I love. To, I'm an actor. I love to act. Love to act. All right. Scott Todd, besides being a pilot, any other hidden talents? I don't think I have any more hidden talents. Like, I don't, I don't know. There's nothing. Hey, I've been skateboarding of late. Like, I've got not doing anything, but skateboard's a crime, man. Like, so. It's, it's a crime, it, Thrasher. Thrasher, baby. That's right. Um, for those of you that want to donate your Thrasher subscription uh, to Scott, he will gladly accept it. And read it cover to cover yes. every month. Read it cover to cover. Tate, Tate, what's your hidden talent? Uh, do you like riding bikes? Sure. Yeah. You're a cyclist, though. You're not. You don't. I ride a bike. You cycle. Yeah, that's true. You ride an e-bike too. <laughs> so I even have less. You have yeah. less respect for me. It's like, like like a normal bike rider. You just ride an e-bike down here. Yeah. It's so funny because when I, when I see the cyclist state, they won't even look at me. They're like, they just kind of shake their head like condescendingly. Like, what is that? It's scooters, what it is. 
<laughs> Incredible. Bearline Aaron, what's your hidden talent? Um, I play bass guitar and um, not currently, but um, a few years ago I was ranked in top 10 in our state in motorcycle racing. So, wow. wow. Just quite a few years ago. Wow. Wow. Holy cow. Drop yeah. the bomb on us, man. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll say it. I'm not afraid. That's pretty sexy, Bearland Aaron. <laughs> does, does Bearland Missy like that? Yeah, she, she, she likes the bike. She's got her own, actually. Whoa. Yep. Now, now we're learning a lot. Yep. Uh, Laura Zana, what's your hidden talent? <laughs> My hidden talent, huh? Uh... I'm not so sure I have one. I think I'm pretty well-rounded. All talents. <laughs> How come I hear a song in the beginning of Motley Crue's Girls, 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 when I think of Bailey Aaron now? Oh, stop. <laughs> <laughs> well, my, my hidden, my hidden <laughs> talent is I know, I know magic. <laughs> We've yeah. seen that We're live. That's yeah, actually yeah. true. Yeah. That's actually true. Oh, yeah, yeah. we did it. I can make a Cuban sandwich disappear in five minutes flat. <laughs> exactly. The Columbia, baby. The Columbia. Uh, all right. Speaking of, I, I got to go hit lunch, actually. So uh, I'll do something uh, fairly healthy today. I don't know. Rock Kibby? Yeah, no Rock Kibby. I can't even find that here. Jeannie, you know what Rock Kibby is? No, but I have a new coffee shop for you. What is it? I've been really excited to tell you. It's right across the street from the Mavericks. It's called The Sip. I've been there. Good breakfast burrito. Isn't it amazing? Really good. Really good. Yeah. It was, and good internet too. Yeah. They just opened a couple <laughs> weeks ago. So. Yeah. Thanks. Well, barely there. What are you saying? Thanks. Was that a slam on the internet? All we got was the word angst because we couldn't get the TH at the beginning. Oh, my God. <laughs> Seriously. I, I, honestly, like, on this roundtable, it's not oh, all about you, Aaron. Funny. <laughs> angst. You, you, see how, you see how, like, me coming out at him first, he's on the rope. So he's been out of sync this whole time, man. Like, that's the way you, you got to take Fairland is you got to, like, punch first, and he's not expecting it. And then the whole time he's thrown off his game mark. <laughs> yeah, I'm not, yeah, but you know what, though? Now that I know about his motorbike thing, like, he's like one of those characters in Sons of Anarchy. I'm not messing oh with him. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, no way. Don't mess with the bear land. He's going to have, like, a cut at boot camp. He's going to come in. It's crazy. All right, well, thanks, everybody. And uh, see everyone next week. All right. Hey.